when there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Dawn of the dead. Welcome to this week's Radical Retro Rewind. I am your host, Radical Ryan Hunter. Back again with me is my brother David as co-host. Hi, everybody. We're back with another February movie that we love. So we had Teen Witch, which is one of the movies that David loves. Who doesn't love a popular girl? Wow. Or a witch, for that matter. So this week for movies that I love is 1978's classic, classic, classic Dawn of the Dead. Night of the Living Dead has ended. Dawn of the Dead is here. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I have to say, much like many pop culture things in my life, I owe David the title of asking me, have you ever seen Dawn of the Dead? Forever changing my life, much like the time that he showed me Desperate Living from John Waters. <laughs> That changed your life in a very, very, very scary way. I never knew things like that existed. Junior high school, saw Dawn of the Dead, and it's crazy to say, I think people that know me might say that this is a movie that changed your life, but it really honestly forever changed my life. I was obsessed with this movie. It really is truly, I can say, my favorite movie still. I can't explain why. It's just all elements that work together to create this. I feel like I've spent so many hours with this movie over the years as a kid growing up high school that the foursome in this movie is almost like friends in a way because I've spent so many hours with these people. No, it makes perfect sense. This is what bonds people to movies and cartoons and podcasts, hopefully ours. Well, you know, these voices over here, these lovely voices. <laughs> this even collated in 2004 when I graduated high school, David and I went to the Monroeville Mall where Dawn of the Dead was filmed. So this is how much of, first off, how much of a geek that I was that when I graduated, that's all I wanted was to go to the Monroeville Mall. But it just shows what this movie means to me. Clearly, because uh, you didn't want to go to Paris or England or Ibiza. You wanted to go to the Monroeville Mall. In Pennsylvania. And we definitely have stories about that trip. I actually have the actual pages of my journal. So we have the exact day of June 30th of 2004. Oh. God. So we will definitely get into that. I was so obsessed with this movie. I ran a website, read the novel when I wasn't watching it. I wrote fan fictions about these characters, what would happen to them after this movie. If a character didn't get bit by a zombie or this or that, like this movie was everything to me. So movies I love, what better movie to do than George Romero's Dawn of the Dead. Rest in peace. George. Rest in peace, I really. I to get back up. I think we all did at one point. So David, you were the first person to mention Dawn of the Dead to me. I'm assuming you just came across it at one point in your life. I've always been a horror junkie. I think we discussed previously, now that I've gotten a little bit older, and my kids, I'm, I'm a little... I don't want to say apprehensive, but I'm not so much about the gratuitous violence and blood and gore, like scary, like hills have eyes kind of grossness. But yeah, I've always loved it. You know, Nightmare on Elm Street and, and horror films and Dracula and zombies definitely are a progression of that. Yeah, so I'm definitely the type of person I give every movie a chance. So in younger years, I used to really enjoy bad B films, C films, and even D films, like the the cruddier, the better. The so, and I'm not saying Dawn of the Dead is even that. I'm just saying that I'm pretty open to so many things. So yeah, I, I don't know how I came across it. I actually don't remember, to be perfectly honest with you. I just know that I really enjoyed it. There's some campy aspect of it. Even the color of the blood. I mean, at this point, people commented, yes, it's, I mean, Tom Savini is a master of makeup, but yes, this blood is like fluorescent red. The zombies are gray. It's not the most. Well, it's a fantasy thing too. Like, honestly, one of the things that I always loved about it is when and again i don't know i'm gonna jump around is that in the movie when they block the entrances to the malls like to me that was so logical and to me that was something that i would actually think of so i thought it was pretty cool and who wouldn't want to be locked in the mall that's what i think really is the selling point of this movie like we need to go back because this movie was before the years of walking dead a matter of fact this is the original walking dead 
everybody is stolen from George Romero. Okay, so let me let me put it this way. No, is George Romero the first person to make the dead coming back to life? No, you have Dracula, you have other Frankenstein, you have other phantoms and different things, but George Romero really put it in the forefront of people's minds, and the creative Walking Dead love him, you know, love Walking Dead, you know, but you can't say that that didn't start the whole thing off. Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead. Truly, Night of the Living Dead is a cult classic, and that really did and, and David's right, and George Romero was the one that made the zombies actually cannibalistic. So prior to this, zombies did come back. They kind of were more like voodoo zombies, I would say. They're coming to get you, Barbara. They're coming to get you. Johnny! So George Romero made zombies cannibals. George Romero made them more, yeah, mainstream. The godfather of zombies, and he definitely had an influence. I don't know how a modern audience would see this. I, I like to great movies based on my partner Gaetano. He is not someone who likes to rewatch movies. I notice he has a really a short intention span with things. And I hate to say this, but I base movies on I think what a modern audience would be with my partner even though he's in his late 30s he to me is the modern audience he needs to get right to the the meat and potatoes and i think that's what modern people would want nowadays with a movie like this but i'm all for character development to instant gratification everybody this lifetime wants instant gratification and this is not that movie a matter of fact i would say the first 25 minutes of the movie is really built up uh we start in a news uh a news building where our our lead Fran works at and then it goes to a tenement and then it goes to a scene when our heroes are about to take off in the helicopter but it does not get right to the mall so I could see last night when I was rewatching this in preparation that well first off he did end up going to bed but he was just like what's going on like it did not hold his attention so I do think that this might be for certain people nowadays unfortunately but for horror fans and zombie fans this is a class. I 100% agree. And if you look at the new version of it, which is what, well, when was that put 2004's out? 2004's Dawn of the Dead. Well, you've got the more, more modern, which I'm sorry, fast zombies are scary zombies. They are. They are terrifying. I feel like slow zombies are scary, especially when they kind of become a horde of them together and gross because you can kind of, as they're slowly moving, you can see more of the, the rotting and the grossness of them all and the scariness. But when a zombie is running after this fatty i'm scared which brings me to like zombie land where one of the rules is stay limber one of the quote-unquote rules of zombie the guy i mean it's true that is the natural progression right for our modern times they take something slow like the zombies and they make them speedy gonzalez but that is one of the things that the remake did bring to the forefront i definitely i think at one point we should definitely do a remake dawn of the dead review as well a great movie but nothing will beat the original well the original to me is again what set off the genre i mean night of the living dead really did but you have to look at night of the living dead versus dawn of the dead i feel like dawn of the dead is like progression from where the new dawn of the dead would be the progression from the old dawn of the dead so does that, does that make sense so you had night of the living dead which is very 50s vibe to me like like barbara I, her name should be peggy sue in my mind for some reason like you know what i mean like but the movie itself okay so it takes place it's it's in a news station. They're reporting about this sudden outbreak of cannibalism. Fran, who... Francine Parker, played by Gaylene played. Ross. Gaylene Ross is... That's, it seems to be she's the type that has things under control. At least she 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 is perceived to be under control, and she's basically telling people you can't send people to outdated centers or churches for safety because you're going to kill them. Basically, she's basically saying that in a nice way. You can't send them to places things that are outdated, like the, a military base, when we know that these are not viable sources to send people during this horrific cannibalistic pandemic. Sort of whatever is going on, we don't even really know what's going on. There's some experts being interviewed and she's basically gets in contact with her boyfriend who is Steve Andrews who is the 
helicopter pilot for the news station. And he Flyboy. tells her, yeah, he, that's his nickname you find out later in, in the uh, movie Flyboy. He basically tells her to be on the roof at a certain point because it's going to go down. He knows that she's not safe there. He knows that this station is going to be shut down. It's going to be overcome with these creature zombie things. And he's like, you're up on the roof at whatever, midnight. Yeah, Sign I think off, it's midnight. Get out. We're going. That, to me, the most sensible thing I've ever heard. And her boss at the news station, who she's having this quarrel with, is sending people to rescue stations that have already shut down. And he is worried about people tuning out. That's all he cares about, is people tuning out of the news. Meanwhile, she's literally saying on the air, you're going to kill people, like David's saying, by sending them out to outdated, probably overrun by zombies, rescue stations. So it is chaotic, this beginning. It also shows you how douchey people can be. He's worried about ratings during a national, global situation where people are dying. It sets it up in my mind that I like this character already because she is, even though she's part of this news thing, and she's like, I'm not going to send people to get killed. I'm going to do the right thing, no matter what. So. And she does speak up throughout the movie. Fran is the opposite of Barbara in the original Night of the Living Dead. I think Romero wanted to almost redeem that She's like the line. end girl. She's like the end girl when you think about it. She does have a moment, like, after this, instances where she is the damsel. Debbie Downer. But- Oh, she definitely is downer. But she's speaking the truth. That's the thing. I mean, and Gayleen Ross in interviews always does mention that. She's like, she's the downer. But she does, honestly, the two characters in this movie, Ken Foray as Peter Washington, him along with Gayleen Ross as Franny, they are the two characters that throughout this movie maintain their head and come up with, honestly, every plot and every idea that does save them and does at the end of this, she is still alive, spoiler alert, because she's so smart and wanted to learn how to fly the helicopter. And she is smart enough to know that she can't rely on anybody else but herself to some degree. I guess that's what we're saying. Like some people would assume someone like that is very cold and calculated. And the way I look at it is she's a prepper. She is prepared for bad things that are going to happen. She is the type of person that takes charge. She's a leader, but not really leader in this particular situation she nice. I, you know and i think that's admirable i think that i have a heart of gold and i know people tell me that i you know i'm not patting my own back or shoulder or whatever but at the same time i know that when it comes to my family i have to be controlled and a little bit calculated to make sure they're safe like everything that was going on last year and was scary to me you know like and i was like okay no am i an alarmist am i gonna buy thirty thousand things of toilet paper not necessarily but i was going to make sure that i had enough food for two weeks if something happened if something got shut down you know what i'm thinking ahead not to be an alarmist but at the same time i'm also not letting on to other people in my household that i'm doing it and to me that's really a true leader you're not you're not alarming people but you're being smart enough and again i hate to sound like that because oh yeah toot my own horn i'm not doing it for that reason i'm just trying to say yeah a true leader is not someone that goes i'm the leader and i'm doing this for you look what i've done for you and i you should do it the way i do it uh, to me a true leader is someone who's working behind the scenes to make sure the rest of you don't stumble and fall that's so true. And the two leaders in this movie, to me, would be Peter and Fran. So, yes, yeah, so Ken Foray is another character. He plays Peter Washington. And last of our foursome is Scott Reiniger as Roger. One of the things that make me love this movie is the foursome. I love Peter and Roger's relationship. They're two SWAT members that meet during a raid in a tenement. The military is being sent in because there's this one apartment that is keeping the zombies in in the basement. I mean, things ensue. There's a crazy, a racist character, Wooly, that goes crazy and starts shooting everybody in this tenement. And Peter is the one that puts this guy down because Roger is like on top of him. Roger is a little, little shorter guy and they make a thing about it. Like, cause Peter is this gigantic African-American character and Roger is this smaller- Blonde. Yeah, blonde. The two of them, they they have jokes throughout the movie about him being smaller and him being larger. And they, they have this friendship that blossoms and it carries on throughout the movie. I mean, this is a spoiler, but later on something happens to Roger and Peter is mourning him. He visits his grave in the mall where they like bury him in the potted plants. He pours champagne down for him. When Stephen and, and Fran are having their like romantic dinner in the mall, Peter's out there with his man buried out in the ground. So the characters in this movie, I just love so much. They're, now they're not perfect. So Stephen, the helicopter 
pilot is shown as i mean how would you describe him he's he's hot he's doesn't think in some ways he's very like there's a point when he's trying to help peter because there's a zombie coming at him and he's shooting at the zombie but he's not even putting two and two together that because he can't aim because he's not like a military person he could shoot peter at, at one point he tries to help but everything he does is he's ill-equipped for this world uh, he doesn't mean that he's weak you know what i'm not a sharpshooter if, if i yes i understand that you pull the trigger you know and you point and shoot but doesn't mean that you're going to get the right aim here's the thing like that's 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 part of it it's not his it's not in his dna his makeup it's who he is he was a, he was a helicopter pilot for a news station he's not a, a sharpshooter he's not a military he's not a soldier and uh you know it's funny because in the new version of it which i feel like well, i shouldn't talk about because we're going to maybe do something but there is the the back and forth okay so there's a scene in the bathroom with Dane reigns oh god yeah. i can never get his name right uh, the police officer who's yeah. kind of the, the the military experts for the so yeah. to speak is like do you know how to use that and he's like yeah you just point and shoot he's like well it's only deadly if you take the safety off so he would have tried to shoot a zombie and not even been able to because the safety was on the gun because he didn't know so yeah those are the parallels i necessarily i've shot a gun before you know very little um i wouldn't know all the ins and outs that had a you know dislodge it if something gets caught in it and and the safety so to speak so right they're not naturally right off the bat it's showing that just because you know one thing and thank god he knew how to fly the helicopter i mean it did save them but yes, but in the same sense, he's not equipped like that. Everyone. But I also feel like they're very hard on him. Like, there's a scene where I feel like they tend to get angry with him very quickly. Like, when he was starting to fall asleep, he was flying a helicopter all night. And the guy's like, I understand he doesn't want him to fall asleep and then crash to their death. But he's like, hitting him like, you loser. Like, get up. Like, he gets pissed off because he starts to fall asleep. Well, you try flying a helicopter all night in the dark and see. Yeah, he does not pour water tired. on his face. But you know what? I always thought the same thing. Having read the novelization, I know that Steven, the flyboy, is friends with Roger prior to this. They know each other, according to the novelization, because they meet at a local bar and they've been talking about this. Things going down and they always promised themselves if something happened that they would do this together so it's almost like steven gets left out once roger and peter become a thing and it's like the military trained guys and steven and fran who are like the civilians i think he feels left out in that sense and he tries but at the same time there's a great line that peter says he underestimates these zombies and you underestimate them and you get eaten so that part when they get to the mall and roger and steven have gone down and fran is awake and steven's been sleeping and as soon as he wakes up he's like those guys are maniacs and then he just goes by himself down like and fran's like well i always love that like fran's like let's get up to the rough or the roof so she's like she's leaving those two down there but let's get up to the roof because they left they've been down there in this mall but he goes down and he doesn't even think that you know he's just like i'm playing i think that's what happens to him almost like this is like a play world like he wakes up even at the end he's the reason why the mall ends up being taken over by the gang because he decides to shoot them as opposed to just letting them go you know what i mean like the actions of steven does cause repercussions for them but at the same time i do think they play him down and they mistreat him in some way well here's the funny part you remember when what was the video game was it left for dead or dead rising dead, dead rising maybe that's what it was dead rising when you said that people would lose their minds and act dead stupid rising. Yeah, yeah. It, it kind of comes into like a disbelief sort of a thing is it, do you think he's just naturally a did to do you know an, an idiot so to speak or do you feel like he's in disbelief because there's also a line one of fran's famous lines that says basically you you know when they're in the mall for a long time time they're running out of some supplies and they're well and this they're is stuck. when they decide that they're not gonna because the original yes yeah, to set this up the original plan was just to stop at the mall sleep get supplies but then this is when they realize that they should stay here because they would have to fill up on gas for the helicopter multiple times and they have everything they need here which makes perfect sense honestly a mall has clothing and depending on the, the type of mall especially an older mall where there might be a, a, a big hardware store in it like this mall like and this mall has everything including yeah. a, an, a gun store luckily for them yeah so you know what it's it's the perfect place to be in the sense for supply purposes but then fran basically says that it's so nicely packaged up that you don't realize that it's also a prison, prison too yeah like you don't realize is that as the coming days and months and weeks go by that more and more zombies are coming to come for them basically they know they're in there david i'm afraid 
You're hypnotized by this place, all of you. It's so bright and neatly wrapped, you don't see that it's a prison, too. Stephen, let's just take what we need and keep going. And she wants to go to Canada. She's been wanting to go Who to Canada. Who doesn't want to go to Canada, apparently? Because Canada, nothing ever bad happens in Canada, apparently. Every movie, it's either that or uh, Arcadia. <laughs> I want to go to Terminus. They have barbecue Terminus, there. yeah. It's, oh, there's always a place <laughs> that... You know, there's always a magical place. But in this movie, they end up at the mall. So I gotta say that this whole cast is attractive, I think. For the time frame in, yeah. For their set for the 70s. I they feel definitely like have a is... 70s, 80s vibe to them. You know, like this, the haircuts, like the bowl cut, like, you know, whatever. Fran has that big bowl cut looking, you know, like Suzanne Summers, Chrissy from... And don't Reese you Company. love that at one point she becomes the beautician and starts cutting their hair for them in the mall because there is a... Um... In that scene that she dresses up and she's like got a gun and she's looking going ooh, 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 like like holding the gun to her lips like she has like a ma she's looking at a man she looks like a drag queen she j does her makeup like a drag queen and then she's playing with a gun like she's like in a western o Annie Oakley like, yeah. or something yeah with a gun but this is after honestly they so they leave this character actor of Steven goes to follow the two boys at one point and they leave Fran and because the, a zombie this is the Harry Krishna zombie here's Fran upstairs the zombie goes up and she doesn't have a gun so this sets up the part that she's alone she uses flares to like get away from the zombie but they leave her without a gun so after Fran has this moment this is the end of her damsel in distress if she does have a damsel in distress moment this is the end this is when she decides the next morning that she's also a pregnant character we should add that she's pregnant Peter mentions that she looks sick and Roger's like well what do you expect and he's like no physically first of all I love that Peter is so smart he knows everything that's going on and when they find out if she's pregnant he asks if she wants an abortion because he knows how to do <laughs> it's not even funny don't i'm not laughing i'm just laughing because of the, the sheer like shock value of insanity that that line still like gets me it's like do you want do to, you want to what are you gonna do you can do you do that on the side well we <laughs> know from our grandmother who famously told us that back in the day what was it david a, a coat Bor hanger borax so octagon, uh, octagon, octagon so all it took was a coat hanger and a bar of octagon soap back in the day supposedly this is what we've heard oh god that's the thought of it is, is but just Peter crazy. he knows how to do it and it's so crazy because this is happening at night and Fran's in another room shaded in darkness smoking her cigarette pregnant on the floor we didn't know we didn't know you shouldn't drink and smoke when you're pregnant it was the 70s we didn't know I mean I think they had an idea too but at this point she's probably like oh my god I don't even care at this point she's just like she's smoking she's listening she's in tears and she's hearing the guys talk about you know should she have an abortion so this is next morning she wakes up and she's wrapped in her snuggie. She's watching the news and it's almost like what we went through this last year with COVID. She's listening to them talking about, we're thinking about this as a viral disease and if there could be a vaccine to stop this virus. But she tells them, I'm sorry you found out I'm pregnant because I do not want to be treated any differently than any of you guys treat yourself. I don't want to be left without gun again. I want to be included in all the plans. All the plans. And I want to learn to fly that helicopter. Yes. So that would bam, be bam. Actually, you would be the Fran because I'd be like, even weapon. though I look, even though I look pregnant because I've gotten so fat in the last year, I want to know what's going on. I would just and say I was pregnant. Yes, I'm pregnant. <laughs> and yes, is there I'm a dare? Is there a Dairy Queen that's downstairs still functioning? Yes. <laughs> priorities i want to no, be included honestly, in all the food eating i would and, be like that and you know what though it's like a degrading moment for steven look at the face of this character when his quote-unquote woman is telling him what's gonna happen in front of the boys and he is degraded but peter probably because he has faced people putting him down and his opinion down he agrees with everything that fran says yes 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 everything makes sense although it, until when she says i don't want to be left without a gun again then he, he looks well, that well, up he can I just say us, something? Steve. Can I just say something with all of George Romero's films? He tackles sexism, racism, inequality, yes. bigotry, bigotry, yes, all of this it. in every single film. And I don't think people give him credit for that. I don't think people look at it that way. And people have to look at like I know that some people are like, oh my god, it's a horror movie. Stop looking into so much of it. Oh my god, it's a cartoon. David, stop looking into it. Yeah, sure is great, but don't act like it's like this literary work of art or anything. But the point is, when you get it and you get really get it that that that's that's really where the filmmaker the storyteller really touches you and here's the thing 
he is discussing things like racism. He is discussing things like sexism, sexism and in, yeah. inequality. And he's facing it. And he's giving the, the character strength to overcome and to let people know that they're not going to be put down. I think we need more of that in the world. I think that if people would pick up on these cues that are left out there and see that in an emergency, okay, let's not say a zombie apocalypse because whatever, but let's say in a real emergency, if you're not going to look at everybody on the whole and their qualities and what they have to offer, Offer and maybe take a little bit of each of it, we won't survive. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's how I look at it. I think that it really touches me that Night of the Living Dead, total racist, what's his name in the basement, all of this. And actually that, that thing that you talked about, the sequence of the movie in the tenement, there is a black priest that comes so up. Actually, there. I think he's Latino, right? Because he's like, senor, senor. I mean, he, or, or Haitian. He's uh, Again, again. Yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah, don't, like hold, a... don't hold me to it because that sounds like, you know, you don't even know you're racist, but I don't because it, it didn't say what he was. He's basically said, we have to stop the killing in order to win the fight, so to speak. Win the war, yeah. To me, I got it as we need to unify and stop killing each other if we're going to overcome what's going on, whether it's a zombie apocalypse or a pandemic or a systematic racism, whatever, whatever it is, unless we join together and stop the killing and stop the, the separation of people. And it's happening right now. It's been happening horribly recently. <laughs> They're watching at one point a scientist on the television, the guy with the eye patch, and he does say this is not the Republicans versus the Democrats. Which is true. Like, you cannot politicize things like a zombie apocalypse. We should be united. And to David's point, this is 1978, and George Romero's two surviving leads are a pregnant woman and an African-American man. So they also block the entrances to the mall, like David was saying. Now, this is a genius plot. They have Flyboy flying overhead in a helicopter, and we're assuming that he must have put down Peter and Roger to hotwire the trucks to move them. And this is when we get, I mean, we get three major moments of suspense. There's one part where Roger is hotwiring the truck unexpectedly, a zombie is approaching him. I love this because Steven is in the helicopter and he's trying to fly back and forth, which I think is so smart to get Peter's attention to go help Roger because he's at somewhere else with the truck waiting for him to hotwire this truck. So we get the bam, Roger's almost bit number one with the zombie. He gets a little crazy after he does survive that. And he's almost bit again when they go to hotwire a car. He gets away with it. So bam, another moment of tension. By the third time, Roger forgets his bag in the truck. And God, there's so many times I pictured in my mind, what would have happened if he didn't have to go back for that bag? He wouldn't have been bitten. This is the third moment of suspense. And at this time he does get bitten, unfortunately. I want to add though, Fran is on the roof, literally teaching herself to shoot right after the conversation we just had. They leave her with a rifle, begrudgingly. Steven puts down some ammo and a rifle on the thing. And she says, I might just figure out how to use this. And she she does the woman teaches herself she is shooting at one point she stops a zombie from biting roger so she literally saved him and then when he's finally is bit she's like on the roof she's like crying she's like it got him it got him but she shoots that zombie in the head and this is when she steps up and becomes literally the third because i mean they're a foursome but she becomes you know a warrior she is the, <laughs> she's the final girl she's empowered she is the dream warrior she's the the buffy i mean yes she is still a downer in the sense that she's like not happy but let's face it what what the hell does she She's pregnant during a zombie She's apocalypse the stuck world in, a, is over. in a mall with two men, well, three men, but... And at one point, I love this. I actually love the scenes when there's not even zombies going on. I love the scenes with them just being in the mall, having fun. And so they clear out the zombies out of the mall. The foursome, they, they're they wheeling They use a car around. that's like a show, which is what would look like a Pinto now these days, I think. Inside the mall, yes, to, to drive idea. the car around Brand. the mall to, to take out the zombies. It's interesting, like the zombies, the like there's zone. none zombies. Like when they open, they have, we're, we're jumping around, there's so many little nuances i'd love i mean this movie is like a two hour and 30 minute movie I it's mean, just so it's a yeah. long movie i would suggest anybody who's listening to the podcast if you haven't just watch the movie because we're jumping around a lot but it's if you're a big fan of george romero to begin with you'll know what we're talking about and all the parallels we're talking about to different movies and things like that but well when france in the department store and she's staring at the nun zombie right and she's on the floor and they play that, that the other thing it shows music. depression there's a point where you see them kind of like did 
they do like not a freeze frame, but they put them in different position in the makeshift home that they've made upstairs. Yeah, yeah. They're like, it's cuts to them like months are passing. They're crossing off things on the calendar. She's getting more pregnant and they're just like going Which through is the very motions. much like what we've been through with There's COVID. Nothing to going do. through the motions, stuck in your house. I mean, obviously not quite the same, but it definitely, I can draw a parallel to mental health and being confined and feeling trapped and worried about your health and the safety and everything else comparatively to this. At this point, Roger is bit. So this is prior to the days when there's a Herschel that they cut off your leg and they... <laughs> Actually, no, uh, that also was a thing that George Romero did in Day of the Dead. He was the one possibly cutting off a limb to save somebody from the zombie virus. So again, George Romero, people still, but Roger's bitten in the arm, he's bitten the leg. They happen to have morphine readily available. There's a pharmacy, now. there's a CVS in there too. A JC Penney's, a pharmacy, a gun store. And they're just like shooting him up with morphine. And I love this. So they're going through the motions through the mall, eating, Trucking on clothes. shopping. Fran's wheeling around Roger at one point. And I love, he's in the cart, just like gazing at, she's just putting like packages. She's putting like a, a set of dishes in between his leg on the Cart. She's just wheeling them they went to like items. cost plus world market and got like pepperoncinis and stuff and he's eating those out of the jars and the fancy you know greek olives or whatever they're eating yeah playing video games at the time in the arcade they're trying on hat they're making a home of it they put the fake facade which i know david always loves they take everything they need like couches and everything big items up and then they make a facade wall to blend in so nobody knows if someone breaks into that mall. There's a staircase there. there. Yeah, there one and them. I'm assuming, right, the staircase. So I'm assuming that they were coming in and out then from the, unfortunately, I would do, or I would totally thing. do that. And Sorry. the other thing that they made, they made a big mistake with that. I would have gotten chained and a lock and chained the double doors, which under most purposes would have kept out people or zombies from breaking unless you know, they shot it or was a heavy amount of force. Usually those metal doors that are for fire safety, fire doors are very sturdy. I would have totally chained it up and not just left the doors open. And plyboard, like it looks like basically cardboard collapses at the end with <laughs> the facade that they made. We're thinking it's like wood and all this like amazing. They even get the paint that matches. So it's like totally unknown, but it like crumbles like plywood basically when it comes down to the zombies. Could that have been just a plot point to make the ending happen? Yes, but yeah, it's too, it happened too easy. It should have been reinforced. Well, yeah, and then there's also there's a point where they're in an airfield fueling up for gas. And I'll just say that that airfield still existed in what year? 20. <laughs> well, okay. So, okay. So we went to the mall. Let's just go to this right now. We went to the mall in 2004 when I graduated. So at that point, it was prior to Dawn of the Dead's having a huge, not that it ever went out of people's minds, but this is prior to like the zombie craze. When I was looking for zombie movies in high school, we had like 1980s zombie. That was all we had. We did not have a zombie movie every month released. So anyway, Lost Story Short, this is at the beginning, like they realizing that there's a Dawn of the Dead craze and crazy fans. Now the mall has like anniversary things. They close it off. The stars of the movies walk overnight with them. They show the movie in the mall. This was not then, but they did have a little tour going on like the first weekend of the month or something. And we got- <laughs> And you get a free candy. You get a free bag of candy. No, I'm only kidding. Attention all shoppers. If you have a sweet tooth, we have a special treat for you. If your purchases in the next half hour amount to five dollars or more, we'll give you a bag of hard candies free. We got to go around with this man that literally like worked at the mall and I think we might have seen years later that he might have been electrocuted and died. But this man that worked in the mall, older man, he took us in the back. And at the time, the only other two people that were with us was these two filmmakers from Canada that were making a movie about Dawn of the Dead fans. I don't know if that ever got out, but there is film of us looking at this Dawn of the Dead because at the time they had, they have like a little small section that says Dawn of the Dead was filmed here and George Romero. And they were filming these like plaques and then the 250 pound Ryan was on camera then probably. But let me just tell you, this was the <laughs> trip that- <laughs> I wanted to go to Europe, damn it, no, I'm only kidding. David and I, well, this is famously like everywhere we went, things came out of, wait, let me word this. Orifices? Orifice? 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 No, orifices. 
D- things came out of I don't know orifices. D- things were coming out of <laughs> David's orifices. Remember the the tea? Like so, we went to Denny's like, and now you're not- okay. So this is totally lame. Yeah. So this is when they first came out. Over okay, I'm really dating myself. This is when they first came out with the squeezy bottles of ketchup for Heinz ketchup. Heinz, if you're listening, I could definitely be a spokesperson. Heinz ketchup, delicious since 1870. No, actually, I don't remember what year. This is when they had the squirt bottle thing. So I'm in Denny's trying to get the ketchup out, and I'm sque- like shaking this bottle. All of a sudden, I squeeze it, and it shoots out all over my clothing, like because I didn't realize that the ketchup was gonna like shoot out, like squeeze out. Yeah, because we or, or the glass top bottle top ketchup. ketchup. You know, you pass it in there. Yeah. The upside so that down, was one yeah. thing. Then there was the time the restaurant that I ordered tea because I thought I was I don't know if I thought it was even fancy or whatever. I wanted some tea with lemon and honey. And the I curled. Yeah, and I drank milk. it and I we were laughing and tea shot out of my nose. That was another experience. So yeah, really classy. <laughs> and famously, the first night that we went to the mall, we were both exhausted. We fell asleep in the movie theaters in Monroeville, Pennsylvania, watching Harry Potter 2. And everything was shut down and closed. Nobody <laughs> They like locked Close. the doors, turned the lights off. I could have went behind the counter and gotten like some some M and M's and stuff. I wanted to literally lock the theater and left the doors open. We walked out into darkness. Nobody was there, and we fell asleep watching the movie. Anyway, <laughs> while we were there, vandalized we- it. We went to the, well, oh my god, okay, so I'm hoping to go through and find some of this, but the bank that is in the mall, I hope, I don't know if it's still there, we- So basically, we, knowing the movie, knowing the movie we as well as we do, we realized that there were still pieces of the mall that were not renovated, that still could have potentially been touched by zombies or other actors, so we <laughs> decided to remove- pieces pieces of the facade like the facade outside the bank like the little it looks like a backsplash Where like they, have, have, like, they, those, they like, go into the like piece yeah backsplash tiles like yeah you got it out so hey i know i was working on it and david's like do you realize people were looking at you <laughs> i'm like working on this like piece of this tile to come off the wall it did come off so then we get the idea we're gonna go to the airfield where they touch down at one point literally the same building and david i found out this place is still run so we just went there on an off day but there's so we- <laughs> so this would have happened allegedly we'll just say allegedly this might this might have yes, happened this, or might this not. would have been fan fiction we fantasy went to the airfield and we think it's abandoned so we're taking pictures in there and then david gets the idea let's take the, <laughs> the gas pump from- the handle of the gas pump that they <laughs> they pump the gas to the- off. Because they, at one point, Roger is pumping, these are they the They had a telephone thing too, right? A telephone thing. booth there? Was it, or some kind of, like, enclosure? There is a building where they go, and they, and this is where this, the two zombies, they get the shot, zombies yeah. are in the beginning in the air, and Peter goes in, and he's looking for cigarettes, he has coffee. So this building is still there, and these two pumps was, was with a helicopter up. zombie, they call it. David was trying to get that handle. Thank God, in hindsight, thinking now, because we thought it was all dried up. Gasoline Thank God, been... the, the, the gas would have went everywhere. <laughs> the handle didn't come off. Off, but <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. And then David, so there was JC Penny still there, but there was also a little store <laughs> Lazarus. Yeah, so it's like Dillard's, Macy's. Macy's, and Lazarus, I think, or may, may have been or are owned by the same company under different names, similar products, similar, like, you know, it's typical setup of like, uh, you know, a big department store with, you know, makeup, jewelry, clothing, housewares. This was when I was in the trend of buying all of those like peasant shirts and like flower shirts. Yes, yes. Like I was wore peasant, peasant, peasant tops where it had my little hairy chest sticking out. Those three and top like right now, um, right. you know, very earthy and like everything had flower prints on it and like roses, very like La Ista Bonita phase, I guess. Online, online waiting, there's two older ladies there talking. At first, they don't even like acknowledge. And this is clearance. So these shirts are on clearance. And I'm like, damn, I'm, this is why I was living in California at the time, right? And I flew in and I'm like, yes, you are. Oh yeah. my God, these shirts are like half price or they're on 70%. Like, what is wrong with these people? Well, I mean, obviously, it was, I was like, I'm buying, like, I'm, like, I'm buying this shirt, I'm buying this shirt, I'm buying this shirt, I'm buying this shirt. Hell, I don't even know if I'll fit into this shirt because it's really, really tight, but I'll buy it anyway. <laughs> so then we go up to the counter and these two older ladies, the makeup ridiculous, like done up. Tall- 
talking about this one woman. So I told her, one of the women they work with, go upstairs to get those coupons. But she was too lazy to get those coupons. I'm not going up to the third floor to get them. No, I, I'm not going all the way up there to get those coupons. Then they finally acknowledge us. Oh, okay. And so I'm David buying these shirts. And we're trying to make a little small talk. But I always feel like, you know, when you go to like a rural town and you're always like... You, are you you're from like, New York? Out, That's what yeah, they always like, ask are you. The out, are you the outcast? Oh, you're here for the... Did they ask us or was the, the other guy ask us if we were here for the dawn, dawn Yeah, the yeah, the the guy who took us around he's like you're here for the dawn of the dead thing <laughs> yeah that's us she's like do you want to do you want a lazarus card do you want a lazarus card and i said well no she kept pushing pushing and then finally i was like well i don't live here and where i'm from they don't have lazarus and she's like that's an it's even better reason to get a lazarus, lazarus card. card and i'm like it's a better reason because i'll never be able to shop here and never use the be card to... like her sales pitch was not the best forever we have still said that today that's even a better reason to get a lazarus Lazarus card, anything. Which is so funny because the name Lazarus from the Bible is like he comes back, back from, the, from dead. the dead. Jesus like brings him back from the dead. And it's so funny that it would be in this mall where the, the movie was filmed and it's always a, around that sort of thing. There are pictures from when we went in 2004. I will post them. Do be shocked by the size of Brian at the time. I have freshly graduated high school. So am I, I was I'm big, big. Am I big there too? I no, think you I look am. good. I'm big. I'm big. Believe me. This is a high school graduation, Ryan. Before my my braces and there are um, oh my god is there a picture of me at the denny's with the australia green shirt on with this ketchup, with all ketchup. Over me? yes there is with my bondage like rubber coat belt that i used to wear all like the... your your um, metallic like studded but those belts that have, rocker like, belts i was when i was in bands and there is a picture with the ketchup too i have these pictures I'm, i plan to upload uh, some of them to the instagram the radical retro podcast. do you plan on filtering them a little bit of course with the of radical course. filter the radical <laughs> <laughs> radical filtration system no but you will you'll be able to see there there was a bridge that survived there's like elements from the original mall unfortunately the ice skating ring and things that were there at the time and even especially now a lot has been removed so i'm glad we got to see things in 2004 by the way that airfield is called howard b brown memorial airfield in monroeville an airport located two miles from the mall that is still in use to today <laughs> And there's a sign that says, please do not try to steal gas pumps. <laughs> please do not rip off our... Ray may, may end up in danger and or arrest. There was, we had Did we just drive it. into it? Was it open? Right. Yeah, I don't understand. Like, I guess it's only open at certain points, I guess. guess you're, unless you're... So open. at any point, someone could be driving in to take their plane out or whatever. Yeah, and we would have been pulling that. And we even had a trash bag in the, in the trunk ready for it. Allegedly. Allegedly. If that might have happened for the pump's handle. I really wanted you to have the full experience. <laughs> He really did. He, that's what he said back in the day. Now, that's a brother. Ripping off mm. gas pumps for you. Later, I did get a prop from the 2004 remake, which is a paint can that they used to... To paint the, the wall. And the, well, to paint the SOS on the roof uh, of the remake. Oh, oh. oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's from I the remake. the SOS. It's from the... Yeah, it's from that scene. Supposedly, it's screen use held by Ving Rhames. Speaking of Ving Rhames and the remake. And this tile from the bank from Monroeville Mall. God, I have to find Allegedly. it. Allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly, that's right. Oh my god. The Monroeville Mall needed to be redone after we left. So, Dawn of the Dead, the characters continue to live in this mall for up to a point. Roger does pass away. And the bond, again, that Roger and Peter have, he calls for Peter at the end. It's so sad. He, he says, I'll try not to come back. I'll try not to come back because he doesn't want to come back to be a zombie. Yeah. It's almost I, pathetic. It's almost like a little baby when he says it like that. I'll try not to come back. Yes, like, it's yes. So, it's actually sad. Very sad. That's why there is emotion in this movie. And there's the friendship that these people form. So then after he passes away, I feel like almost like that's when all the joy leaves the group. Because I think that's when morality almost hits them. That's when the fly boy proposes to Fran at one point with rings. And she's like, it wouldn't be real. But I think she doesn't want anything to do with him. If she wasn't pregnant and stuck in a mall, I think she would end up with Peter. Are those street brothers or real brothers? Oh my god, yeah. When he like they're in the plane when they're first driving to Mo, he's like, I have brothers out there. She's like, Are they street brothers or real brothers? And it's so funny, it's like this jive talk, says. like like in the in the uh teen witch when he's like, Give me a soul kiss. Very touching upon like races, some of the like I don't know. Maybe I think it's, it's because it meant of to be that way. I think George Romero was trying to, I don't know. I, Make I, it hip? 
I don't know. Not make it him. Uh, They're two characters. So this is early in the beginning. So you have Roger in the front flying with Flyboy Stevens. They're in the front. So Fran and Peter in the back of the helicopter. So she's like, I just kind of, I want to know who everybody is. And he says, yeah, because they don't know each other. There's a lot of nuances and different things in these movies. But in this movie that we're talking about that we really should kind of go by. It's like an emotional roller coaster. That's another reason why I like it. There is, uh, honestly, there's the excitement and joy I, I feel like in a way of them when they block the doors and they're getting rid of the zombies there's like the ew we have to get rid of these zombies oh we're in danger but there's an excitement about it and yes. there's an excitement about almost like when you it's gonna sound stupid but when you let's say you have like a storage room you empty it out and you make it nice and clean and right and yeah usable space you get like a like you feel good about it it's like they're getting rid of all the bad element they're gonna be able to establish themselves they like, clean up the dead bodies yeah it's, it's like it's like fixing locker. it's like fixing up a new fixing up a house so to speak and there's an excitement about there there's the the thrill of you know what if you have to be careful with these zombies like i'm not not a thrill but i like can adrenaline rush i guess you have the setting up house you have the having fun going through the mall you know peter with his pimp jacket on like very, yeah i like, love that they all, they all that. I love that shit. On. like crazy dress up Fur coat that's when they do the famous when there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. They're all in, like, their best, like, fur coats. Because they're, like, you know, raiding the mall. 70s glory. What the hell are they? They're us, that's all. There's no more room in hell. What? Something my granddaddy used to tell us. You know Makumbo? Voodoo. Granddad was a priest in Trinidad. Used to tell us... When there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Speaking of that, think about the mall and everything is a weapon. Yes, you, you, were, you, were, you were talking yes, about Steven. the fact that what Fran used the, the flare. Anything in the mall could be a weapon. In fact, they used screwdrivers as weapons. They killed a zombie with a screwdriver. The they, zombie that just so happens to be posing as a mannequin, that one. Well, it ha maybe, it, maybe it was Christy Swanson in Mannequin too. After her career is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's gonna stop oh, us yeah, so now. I did mention that David did meet Christy Swanson in our mannequin episode, but he wasn't on to. She wasn't very nice. I'll just say that. She'll probably try to sue me now. So, allegedly. <laughs> Honestly, that's what you gotta say now. Don't sue me. Uh, she came off as very entitled and a diva. And I remember thinking to myself, you haven't made a movie since Buffy the Vampire. I think you said you were gonna say that, like, who are you, Buffy? Oh my god, you have no idea. What all it's so funny. I remember when... You met Charisma Carpenter and she was being mean to her, her she, was she was a diva-ish too she was kind of diva-ish so we talked about the beginning in the newsroom we talked about the tenement scene sort of we talked about the fueling of the gas pump episode. the gas pump theft potential story allegedly we talked about being in the mall we did not talk about a pivotal moment in the the i don't know if you say the arc of it when marauders or or this is what, really the beginning of the end when a biker gang who's been on on the streets on the streets through this whole thing been surviving through this whole damn thing which is what something i quote to david all the time like this is one 7-eleven that's near where we grew up that anytime you pass it there's a motorcycle gang outside of it so every time i pass that i i think about that quote like they've been surviving all through this this gang does radio them at one point they see them on the roof and they're pretending that they're not not a big group of people and they're saying there's like three of us uh how, how many you have in there and this is the one point that fran is like well maybe we should say something and peter's like shut up and listen and i would have said he realizes would... that they're gonna come in they're gonna come and a matter of fact the people they don't even say anything and they just have they assume that they have by the way that they're even hearing them because the guy says you fucked up real bad like we're coming now because they didn't i would have said we have about 24 national guards yeah Defunct National Guards and a handful of civilians. That's what I would have said and see what they would have came. Yeah, this is one of those scenarios. It's like one of those what if happens. What if they didn't have... What if these... They could have lived in that mall 
probably she would have had her baby there. They would have lived there. What I don't understand is this. These people are so stupid. They see that they blocked up the mall. They almost get like angry at them. Now, yeah, if I was like, smart they, they and I was a biker gang, it. I would have went in and went in and lived there too then. If that was the case and taken over. Like, I don't know what they thought was going to happen. I think this is just George Romero trying to show that people are like, so idiotic and like materialistic, even at the apocalypse. Because we've always mentioned this. What good is them taking a TV and stealing these things from the mall when there is no t you know it's like them just what is what good is money if what is a right. zombie gonna take the money like i know there's a there's a scene where roger yes. and peter what break into does yes yeah, steven, steven and peter, peter and, and peter, they, and they peter. go into that bank where <clears throat> the time and they take pictures of it though like as a joke because they know the money is not gonna i mean they do say me. if what you, if? Know, you never know you never know which is true and like they load up which i think is so smart they've been loading up the helicopter with supplies like they kept that helicopter fully loaded that's why these people are so prepared for a lot of things they, they brought in their nutri game bars those nutri oh i hope so I and hope granola so. they put in they had the quaker granola bars just in case for a long trip you know they're light portable but you know satisfying fran learned how to do the helicopter so yes, this motorcycle breaks in, and instead of just laying low, Flyboy has this inner monologue of, they took it, they're taking the mall, it's, it's ours. ours, it's ours, they're gonna take it. He's very it. disillusioned, he's very disillusioned because in his mind, that's, think about it, that's the end of their, his mind of his utopia or his safe place. Yeah, It's over. His safe place is over, and at some point, he has a heart, he's a human being, it's not like, he, he's not a cold person. I think he's realizing that Fran is very pregnant. He's thinking that, like, he... Fran has a wandering Fran, eye. He, she wants Peter. Fran, Fran, he has been telling Fran, Fran, like, she's, like, almost like a moment where it's, like, wah, wah, like, like, scary. Like, she's looking in herself, and it's, like, a scary moment. He's, like, Fran, you don't realize how amazing it's here. Yeah. And she's, like, but you don't understand. When she does the yeah. famous line that it's a prison as well, he's, like, you just took away. I mean, I would be upset, too. You destroyed every... We're the ones who killed all the zombies. We're the ones who set up here you could have potentially been in here okay let's be honest if someone said you know i have you know my four kids and this and right, that right, and whatever right, right. and we're outside can you would you please let us in and radio though there was potential they could have like let them come up through the roof or i something, think so them. if they would have seen if they would have actually seen a small group or even they might have helicoptered down but see we know through walking dead and these games like dead rising everyone evidently has alternative motives you never know but i think if it was a small family mm -hmm. they could have definitely handled. Well, here's a funny thing. In Fear of the Walking Dead, there's a scene where God, what is it? Is it Madison? Madison is the is the like Madison the mother, yeah. There is a guy in like a RV kind of a thing radioing her basically saying that he's going to wait for them to die off or he's going to get in there. and he presents himself as only three people in a, and meanwhile he's got a, a small army of people that are trying to take stuff. So there is again that that But parallel, we that, do see in this part, yes they broke in, but see Peter radios to see Stephen and says, now we have a war. Basically meaning if they would have just gone and went, they would have destroyed things, took things, but now they're shooting at them because he decides to shoot at one of the bikes. And they close down all of the entrances to all of the stores. Yeah, trying to block them. But they get in anyway. All it takes they them shoot the lock. Because these bikers have bit like, it's like a comic book moment, they always said. Like, yeah. they're putting pies in zombies' faces. Seltzering zombies in the face. Like, it's They get the theirs, face. though. They get theirs. The zombies what, overtake them. The blood them. pressure machine guy with the... the zombies the... kill most of them. Most of them, do a few of them escape? A few of them do escape, but because of this quote-unquote war going on, they're shooting, and... Steven gets shot. And this leads to his death when he famously goes into the elevator, and they're waiting for him. Like, at one point, Peter hears Steven screaming because he's being bitten over the walkie. He goes up to Fran, and she's like, is he dead? And he says, I don't know. I, I did hear shooting. So they wait a few hours for him. They wait to see if he's alive or dead, and, and then... This is when Flyboy Zombie comes alive, remembers from life that the wall was fake, and leads the zombies up into their storeroom in, in the roof. The zombies do remember from life. Some aspects of it. Why did they come here? Possibly memory. This it's was important a place to them. <laughs> This is an important place to them. I think, honestly, I think that Fran needed to see him dead to have that closure. Yes, the zombies come up. And this is where, for people who don't know, Dawn of the Dead had an original ending filmed where both 
leads commit suicide. Steven kills himself in the head and Fran puts her head in the helicopter blade. This was shot. It was lost in a flood, unfortunately. But George Romero did thankfully reshoot the ending where Peter is going to commit suicide and Fran is on the roof thinking about it. Like she's like waiting. It's it's dawn and she's on the roof. The zombies are climbing up the ladder magically to the roof. She's about to, she, she waits to hear like Peter killing himself. She hears a shot, but it's really Peter killing a zombie so he can make it to the roof, fly off with her. He asks, how much fuel do we have? She and says, she's, not much. And he goes, eh, like, eh. They do, and there is hope. They have, like, this music, like, like the eh. dawn is happening. The silver lining. Is not is there, like, there's clouds in the distance and the sun yeah, is Yeah, and it's, like, this bitter. happy, like, emotional, like, oh, music of there's a new day. But in the original ending, you evidently would have seen that the helicopter was going, but the gas would have run out as soon as she killed herself, meaning either way they would have died. Isn't that creepy? Well, that certainly is like that's the ending of the the new one that I hate when they make it to the island and chips, chips, the dog runs and then alerts all the zombies come after them. And you think that on a small island there wouldn't be a lot of zombies, but apparently they are. A stampede that sounds like an uh, elephant stampede come. They went to like an African game farm, evidently. Yeah, it's like crazy. So in my mind, the, they, they, made they it had someplace. enough gas. Fran had her baby. Her and Peter raised that baby, and they met up with the people from Day of the Dead on the island who. We're Who make it to an island in a safer. helicopter, yeah. Make some babies! Tell me your thoughts. Did we miss anything? This movie, again, is so long. I could say so much about this movie. I love this movie. So I hope I did it justice. I hope I convey how much I love this movie. There's language and terms used that would not be appropriate in modern times. But remember, people, this is 1978 movie. This was a different time. I mean, even down to Peter calling, again, Roger, the shorter person, the M word, not little person. But so it's like terms are outdated. Yes, there is a whole racist rant in the beginning, but that was used to show racism. That was, yeah, that was totally shown to like we talked about earlier. So I, I think it I think any derogatory things that are used in the movie are actually made up because of the plot line where you see the folly of your ways, the wrong thing right. that you do. You know, anyone in this modern time, give it a shot. Again, I don't know if this will hold a modern audience's attention as it would have. I'm glad I saw it when I saw it. I'm glad I saw it all the way back then in junior high school. And George Romero will always go down in history for his contributions to the zombie job genre especially not to mention the other social things like we said earlier that he has shown a light to love 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 dawn of the dead david really good movie as far as i honestly i think in general because we're so used to high definition televisions and things like that it also makes it more difficult for a modern audience to get into it because it's degraded i mean think about even the cartoons that we've we kind of went back to to look at and um, some of the movies, you know, some of the, the more classics like Mary Poppins or whatever, you know, like they're, they're preserved, they're refreshed, they digitally and fix them. This movie is not, unfortunately. Well, do you know what happened? There is a Blu-ray release of this movie. So let me just tell you, there's a, the man that owns this movie, Richard Rubenstein. He's the one who originally produced it with George Romero. He is holding the rights to Dawn of the Dead for Ash astronomical amount of money so anyone who tries to do anything with this movie he is how old is he there i mean he was from the original dawn of the dead but he'll he, be he'll be gone and they'll just take well, it well he paid for or someone paid for a whole 3d rendering of dawn of the dead a few years ago this has been done for about five six years already nothing's done of it because he's asking for so much money to even air this 3d version they said it looks so good, the 3D in this movie. There's also a version that just came out in Blu-ray in, not in region one. So anyone in the US or Canada cannot watch this, but they went back to, I think the original print and it is so clear, they said, and redone, but you cannot get this. It is only available in region two because of Richard Rubenstein holding these rights. But hostage. you can buy it. Can you get a region free? I think the modern Blu-rays are almost- Foolproof. Fun. Yeah. We could be having a crystal clear Blu-ray release that just came out with soundtracks, a book, new interviews, new documentaries. It went for like a hundred and something dollars, honestly, but they said it is like a brand new movie. I would love to see this version. I mean, look at like what happened with Prince with Vanity Six. 
it's funny that he, as soon as he died, I, I was able to, to buy Nasty Girls. Right. Wow. Yeah. Supposedly Not that we're he... waiting for Richard Rubenstein to die, but mm, I guess bye. something happens. I guess something Cancel happens. culture. Bye. No, I would never wish anybody that I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's stupid and I think it's just purely greed or it may Definitely. even, be, it may also even be a, this always seems to happen. People put their personal problems. Maybe him and George Romero had a falling out and it's like final screw you to him. And I think it's really terrible because what are you going to do? You're going to hold on to it and you're going to die with it. What is he going to do? Is he going to burn? Well, the that's the thing. He's asking deathbed? so no, he knows what an iconic movie Dawn of the Dead is, but at the same time, so you're holding it hostage for, this amount that no one's going to pay for it anyway. So why don't you lower it down a little and let people watch the movie, let it live again. If there's a 3D version that's been sitting there on the shelf that could be put in a modern, although it seems like the 3D movies are even now a thing of the past, like that trend went, came and went again. Let people watch this movie again. Let them see it for the first time in high, high definition. Well, maybe we will. We'll probably see it. He can't live forever. Honestly, this is what happens. Then the person who owns the estate says, oh, he wanted $100 million for it, but someone's willing to pay $10 now million try this, for it. <laughs> I'll, I'll sell it for $10 million. Go ahead. Take I'm it. Convinced. Greed and personal issues. Greed and personal vendettas is, is a horrible thing. It divides people, families. And yeah, it's we're talking about a movie and people will say, well, it's not like you're depriving people of Food some amazing... Water. I don't know. Like, yeah, you're not, you're not, you know, holding back a literary work of opera for people it is. And honestly, it's just kind of shady that people do stuff like that. that. I hate that whole thing of regions. I understand why they do it because they want to be able to re-release them in, in different areas. But you know what? This movie's been out. Even the DVD is out of print at this point movies should not be going out of print it's not even available digitally i don't believe movies like dawn of the dead should not be out of print there's some movies that are classics yeah. well you can see the original night of the living dead and the new dawn of the dead on prime i know that because well, because night of the living dead is went out without a copyright so everyone and their mother can release that movie unfortunately well i think we should redo our own and i want to go we could make... we could make a i want to slap make... barbara across the face <laughs> we could make our own get a grip on yourself so, Dawn of the Dead, an amazing film to go with this month of love. You can reach us at Universal Appeal 2020, all one word, on Instagram for David and the Radical Retro Rewind Podcast, all one word, on Instagram. Always being updated, always being added to. If anyone has it in their heart to leave a review, subscribe to the YouTube channel, it all helps. And remember, when there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. And when Lobster Fest is over, lobster people will roam your neighborhood. Red, Red lobster. lobster, I speak your name. <laughs>